how small it can be that can derail a conversation, set expectations. And our ability to take one small piece of data, they're not smiling, and turn it into a whole story. They don't like me. They're not engaged. They're grumpy. It's like, it's extraordinary. <laughs> we are, we are story making creatures and that is both a gift, but sometimes it backs us into a corner. And what you're doing here is you're helping in this conversation understand each other's stories in a way that you might not otherwise understand and helps you deconstruct some of the stuff you've made up about that other person so you can get a more accurate read on what's of what that person what really matters to them, how they really are in the world. Absolutely. And the other thing about it is everyone thinks they're smiling, right? I, they're in a social place and they're like, oh, I, I was smiling. I'm like, I can tell you that I've been working with you for weeks and I can't get a read on you. And if I can't, how is anyone else going to? So he had made the conscious decision at that point to make sure that he was extra smiley to the fact that his jaws and cheeks were hurting but <laughs> that small shift changed the complete experience around to him all, all of a sudden now people are approaching him and other folks that he had met previously are now more engaged and coming up to him and it just it changed everything you know one of the exercises in the book is called how am i misunderstood and what most people realize is like I, people keep getting this wrong about me and it's so often it's like, and what is wrong with them? I, I mean, it's like, I'm surely I am this clearly transparent, most obvious person, but no, no, you're, the, you're this messy, confusing mystery and enigma. So it's really helpful to say, when I do this, it generally means X, not Y. When I look serious, it generally means I'm thinking, not that I'm angry. And that's just a great gift to give somebody else because so often we get triggered by these small things. A lot of times our strengths will often lead to our biggest blind spots. So our clients, very analytical. Some of them are introverted and they're deep listeners, deep thinkers. And oftentimes it's great to get all of that data, synthesize all of that information, analyze it, and then come up with the perfect answer. But in the synthesis, the signal that's going out externally is a stoicism, is a negative furrowing of the brow, and it's not letting the people in the audience that you're communicating with feel that they're heard. In fact, they're interpreting it in the exact opposite. But this they would identify as a strength, like I'm a great listener, I'm super analytical. So we challenge a lot of our X Factor members to look at those strengths and see, is there another side, a double edge to that sword that you might not be thinking about? And if not, that's a great opportunity for you to survey other team members or other experiences or past coworkers to understand, well, what's going on behind my strength? Is there something that I'm missing? Are there some gaps to how I'm perceived so that I can bring that to someone's attention in a new working environment, in a, in a best possible relationship opportunity? Yeah. So, you know, if I was to take that for me, one of the things that, one of my strengths is having ideas. Like I'm great at it and I love it. I get super excited about it. And it's like, here's the problem. This is the real challenge. I'm like, oh my goodness, here we go. And I'm, and what happens, because, you know, in my companies, I'm often a more senior person. What that does is it will suck the oxygen out of the room. Because, you know, when your boss has an idea, it's like, that's, they're not brainstorming. They're telling you the idea. And you're like, <laughs> okay. You know, you're like, yeah. Go. Oh, great idea, boss. Yeah, actually, you know, that is the best idea. We should definitely do that idea. Thank you, boss. And I'm like, okay, so... Part of my negotiation with the people I work with is like, when I'm having ideas, it generally means I'm enthusiastic, not that I want my ideas to be, to be um, had. I have to do a lot of work to diminish the weight of my ideas. They're just random ideas from Michael. They're not the best idea in, in this conversation yet. And it's one of those learned experiences with somebody going, you're killing me with your ideas because I'm like, A, they're all pretty good. B, I can't do all of them. C, there's no space for my ideas. So I'm like, oh, I've got to, I've got to manage that about how I am. It's a strength that has a double edge to it, just as you were saying. Yeah, that's a beautiful example. And it, it's something that I've experienced on our team myself, being someone who loves ideas and solving problems. 
And oftentimes those problems aren't necessarily the most urgent to be solved, but it's an opportunity <laughs> for me to create an idea and, and use that creativity in business. So it's exciting. And that excitement and enthusiasm can overpower the communication of what the team needs to get done or what their priority is. Mm-hmm. 